what we're looking at right here is a dashboard inside of the data center, and I'm looking at different uh, network services inside of that data center. So uh, things like my VoIP, uh, my, my, my VoIP calls, uh, DNS, uh, looking at uh, authentication, looking at um, LDAP. You can see here how we're trending on different KPIs that we're sort of looking in here. So this is really sort of that at-a-glance view that shows me um, exactly how well a particular service is running inside of that data center. Uh, most of these things, quite frankly, are transparent to the users. Uh, if they know uh, that there's something out there that's um, uh, causing problems with DNS, uh, we haven't done our job, right? So we want to make sure that everything is running um, smoothly. There's several different ways that we can actually come in. So let's say, you know, Sally from accounting calls up and she says, I had a, a bad experience in regards to a VoIP call today. Um, you know, what, what happened? Uh, there's several different ways to be able to query and start that investigation. One is to simply come to uh, the Corval solution, and we can begin to start to um, type in a, um, a caller ID, or we can type in an actual, um, you know, um, who they called, so I can search for that. I can also go through and take a look at things just at a sort of a global level, and sort of understand exactly how things are going uh, from that global level. I can also begin to look at failure codes. So a lot of times there's a specific failure codes that we know that cause problems, either cross-vendor support or other things. I can drill down into a call um, that way, or I can even just come in here and look at, you know, poor, looks, looks like I don't have any poor uh, calls going on, but I can just sort of drill down into um, just uh, th those pieces here. So let's let's drill down into one of these uh, failure codes, and we'll go ahead and, and take a look at that particular call. So here I have a more detailed view of that specific call. I can get things like, you know, look at the call quality over here. But really what I'm interested in down here is sort of our decodes and sort of our ability to sort of look at and be able to understand exactly what's happening for that particular call. So here I have a, 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 a message, and this message has uh, specific things. I can see codec information, I can see uh, my, my markings, I can see all those things that are in here. But one of the things I wanna kind of do is sort of, I wanna be able to visualize, like, did this call set up correctly? Did it actually connect out to uh, the different pieces that I want to connect out into? And so one of the things that we can do is we can actually, with the Corval solution, if I go into my voice over IP, I can actually generate um, a, a ladder diagram. So this diagram is really that call that I just chose, and it's looking at all the connectivity across the call managers, it's looking at the different handsets, and I'm seeing all of the individual messages um, that are going across. So this allows me to understand, okay, um, I initiated the call here. Yes, we responded back. Um, we basically went, uh, went down to the, the handset here. Um, I have the communication between all those pieces. So I, I have a full accounting, uh, frankly, of this entire uh, phone call, including the signaling, um, that allows me to understand what the actual MOS was um, for that particular uh, phone call. And at any one of these uh, sort of points here, I can sort of drill in to get additional detail. So for a first level support personnel that just did, needs to know, hey, did this call happen? And was it set up in the appropriate way? This is a great way to be able to do it. And I'll show you something else here. So with the Corval solution, you're only ever a couple of clicks away from the packets themselves. So one of the things that I can actually do is I can actually download uh, the PCAP for this particular call. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because I can begin to sort of uh, attach this downstream. So if I'm the uh, level one support personnel and I'm seeing this particular call, I see something interesting here, an error message or something that that's coming up, um, I might go ahead and download that, that, that PCAP, attach it to my, uh, my ticket, and then send it down to my Tiger teams to be able to uh, uh, investigate uh, further. So it does allow me to essentially sort of wrap that up and encapsulate uh, those calls. Um, and now I have a, a record of that bad call uh, sort of uh, going, um, uh, going through there. Now, there's also some things that we can do with LiveNX. So one of the things that I want to sort of say is, look, I don't necessarily see this call in regards to uh, the branch itself. So, you know, since I'm sitting in a data center, they may be collecting out to a hybrid voice service or some other piece out there, and I wanna be able to see what that happens to be. So we've created an integration that allows you to actually query uh, Live and X. And, and let me uh, sort of refresh this so you can see this, this sort of come in here. But what ends up happening is that I go to Live and X and I say, hey, um, you know, what do you guys know about this, this particular IP address? And what we'll get here in a second here is sort of a painting, a topology painting um, of those flows um, as, co as coming from the LiveNX product. Now, what's great about this is that me as a, as a user, as I'm mixing this data together from the inside of the data center to the outside of the data center, I can begin to sort of uh, click on things and I can kind of see exactly, okay, here are the applications that that particular uh, host is talking. Uh, this guy here is talking uh, to uh, Citrix. 
I can see how much of that data is, which direction it's coming from. So this does allow me to essentially sort of walk through and sort of see uh, this, 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 this data. But really, I kind of want to get a little more detailed on here. So I want to see exactly what's, what's going on here. So one of the things that, um, that we can do is to uh, sort of go back into uh, live action. So if I go ahead and um, uh, highlight this, I can kind of view and go back into uh, live action. So what happens here is that if this IP address is associated with a site, um, I can click on it and then we, we, we land in the live action site view. So here we are from that IP address that we see in that the live action view. So, so John, I wonder if you could kind of pick it up from here and kind of show everybody uh, what kind of things we can troubleshoot from this, from this view. Thanks, Scott. So from the live NX side, you know, we could look at the Austin site and just from a high level, we could look, you know, look at using NetFlow that, uh, data to see what kind of traffic we have in terms of DSCP markings, but also from a deep packet inspection perspective out in the branch, what kind of applications that we have, uh, inbound, outbound, uh, source IP addresses, destination IP addresses. So at a high level, we can tell, you know, what's happening uh, at the Austin site. We can zoom this out a little bit here to a geographical view and see Austin and also in respect to all the different sites out there as well. And then you can look a little bit more in detail from an application perspective where we can see voice over IP and some of the performance issue from a dashboard view, uh, what's happening with uh, the voice over IP into Austin. Now I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail using our engineering console. So I'm gonna switch views. So here we're looking at the WAN from a logical topology perspective. So we have all the different sites connecting over MPLS back to a data center. And, and here's Austin in the bottom uh, left. And you can see all the different connections, how it's actually uh, interfacing to the WAN. We could look at the interface, the inbound outbound bandwidth uh, showing here. And then we can overlay this with NetFlow information. So this is all the flows that are going in and out of Austin and all the different sites back to the data center. And we're looking at that voice over IP problem. So I'm gonna convert this flow back to performance. And we can gather using deep packet inspection information, uh, performance of certain media voice video. And then we can look at the metrics associated with that as well. So I'm gonna click on this particular flow, double click, and it gives us the information from NetFlow perspective, that particular traffic. So we see some real-time protocol happening here. We have you know, drops occurring, and we can see some uh, jitter happening here as well. I'm gonna double click on this particular traffic, and it'll figure out the actual path it took through the network. So you can see that it went through the data center, uh, MPLS data center core, and then back to Austin. And what we're doing here is we're correlating information from various sources, whether it's SNMP or NetFlow, and putting it into one easy to see view. And you can click on any portion of this and you can bring a report, but right off the bat, you can see that the packet loss is increasing. And you can see that there's also some QoS policy happening on the Austin site. And the orange indicator means that there's uh, potentially some QoS drops happening. So we wanna investigate that and we can project this back into the topology. So it correlates back the path and the actual uh, issues that we're seeing. But we'll wanna highlight the Austin WAN interface. And we know there's some congestion uh, here and we'll switch over to the QoS view. And let's drill down and look at what's happening. So right off the bat, you know, using the instrumentation in your edge devices, we can see deep packet inspection, you know, application traffic like YouTube, Salesforce. But once the QoS policy is applied, we can actually see the performance of the queues uh, going through that network. And you can see that the voice class is having some issues. So the yellow indicator here means that there's drops happening. We can drill down further into that and see the actual um, drop rate. But with live action, we can actually read the configuration of that device. So we'll load up that configuration and look at it. Uh, obviously we have you know, pretty low bandwidth here, but we can adjust that. And we build a model of the configuration in our software and we can actually fix that within the device itself. It puts the right no commands in the right place since it's not a template based um, uh, configuration. It's actually how a uh, CCIE would type it 
because we know all the different rules of how to do MQC QS policies. So we can use that to fix that. So it expedites you know, finding issues using the instrumentation in your network and then resolving issues that are related to quality of service. So it makes it very easy. 